We are taking a look today at the brand new 2020 Thor sequence. And this model was just introduced this year. It is the first class B camper van introduced by the world's largest RV manufacturer, Thor Industries. And its claim to fame is it is a direct competitor to the best-selling class B camper van here in North America, the Winnebago Travado. In fact, its layout is identical to the Travado KL's layout. As you can see here, it has your set of twin beds midsection. It has a large wet bath in the back, and then it squeezes your galley in up front. About the one thing though that the Travado has over the sequence in terms of layout is the Travado offers a different layout in the 59 GL, which has the permanent front lounge and then the rear bed slash garage in the back. And just before we head into it, let's take a look at the dimensions. And I'm going to be comparing it against the Travado throughout this video because man, these two rigs are nearly identical and buyers are going to be comparing these two rigs for sure. So I'm hoping that this video will help clear some things up for some of you. So in terms of length, they're identical, of course, because they're both built on the Ram ProMaster 3500 chassis, which clocks in at 20 feet, 11 inches. That's still very manageable. It's very parkable, a little bit larger than the standard parking space, but really you're not going to have any problems parking this thing in crowded city centers. Your exterior width is six feet, nine inches, identical to the Travado. Exterior height, almost identical, nine feet, five inches. Interior height, again, nearly identical, six feet, three inches. And neither one of these rigs have any exterior storage, which is not uncommon in a Class B van. While we're talking about dimensions, let's also talk about the occupant and cargo carrying capacity. And both of these coaches have really good occupant and cargo carrying capacity, almost identical. The sequence has just a little bit more, just shy of 100 pounds more cargo carrying capacity. But keep in mind, these are approximate because your OCCC rating will vary depending on the options. And as we'll see later in this review, the sequence has some options that the Travado doesn't have and vice versa. So once we take uh, the weight of the driver, and the passenger out as well as the weight of a full tank of water and you can see on the sequence it's just one gallon larger at 26 gallons we're left with very similar net cargo carrying capacity 1312 pounds for the travado and 1390 pounds for the sequence so both of these coaches have excellent cargo carrying capacity you're going to be able to fill them up no problem and then have a little bit or a lot extra uh, in store okay let's take a look at the driver's seating position all right this is standard for most pro masters that you're going to be on you can see here i've got the seat forward here i'm going to move it all the way back the pro masters come with telescoping steering wheels not tilt but uh, here you can see, I mean, it's pretty good. I'm going to lean the seat back a little bit more for comfort. All seats pushed all the way back in. Look, you got pretty good arm reach, but the leg room's a little bit tight. But again, that's going to be the same across the Travado and every other rig that's built on the Ram uh, ProMaster chassis. So this is what it looks like from the front. Again, this is the Ram ProMaster 3500 chassis. And you got to love that price. The La Mesa RV here in Davis just under 80,000. Let's take a look at the engine, talk a little bit about the engine specs. So this is a front wheel drive. All ProMasters are front wheel drive. That means you're gonna have excellent turning radius. And the engine specs, and I'm throwing the slide up here, showing the ProMaster against the other chassis that are available here in North America, like the Transit a 350HD and the Sprinter. But the ProMaster is a 3.6 liter gas engine. And it's a six-speed transmission. It's capable of delivering up to 280 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. Now we take a look here. Let's take a look here at the passenger side. You can see it's very clean, very automotive looking. Look at that glass. That is the stock van chassis that comes with the windows from ProMaster. So very clean, very automotive looking. We're gonna talk a little bit about the ventilation uh, in this coach when we step inside. 
Here we are at the back. You can see that is the Thule bike rack system, which comes standard on this coach, and that's excellent, especially at that price point. You got your rear view backup camera as well. And that is the Thule ladder, and that also comes standard. And I love this ladder, and I love Thule. I've had a Thule uh, roof rack system before, and it's excellent quality, very well built. But this is a telescoping ladder. By the way, I didn't do this correctly. Don't do this. There is a magnetic holder on the inside wall of the other door that I didn't use. Uh, I'm just climbing up the ladder here, but you should use that magnetic holder. Let's climb up to the top use the ladder and take a look. Here we are, very clean at the top here. That's a rooftop vent for your bathroom. That is a nearly 190 watt solar panel there. Um, there's your AC unit. There's your covered uh, AC vent, uh, your covered rooftop ventilation fan, and then your wine guard antenna there at the very front. And that is also a 4G capable booster antenna. Okay, here we are along the driver's side. That is your Santa flush system. So this has a black tank flush system, just like the Travato has. And that is your dump station down below with the service center light. Here you'll see this is our city water hookup and our gravity fill, as well as a place to store your sewer hose. And I like the way those things are labeled as well. Let's take a look back at the dump station back here. So this dump station is not a macerator. It's a gravity system and this dump station is not heated uh, like the bolts, but the Travados isn't either. Let's hop underneath the coach. You can see that's your generator there, 2.8 kilowatt generator. That is our black tank you see there with a heating pad on the bottom. And then we're along the back, which is where your bathroom is. And so forward, that is your gray tank. And that also has a heat pad on it. And those are both standard. That is your large 16 gallon propane tank, massive propane tank, which we all know makes us, makes for a great four season coach. And as well as we look around underneath here, we don't see any exposed water lines, which is fantastic. That's because all the water lines for this coach, just like the Travato, are routed along and on the inside of the coach. Now there was one little exposed area I saw just behind the generator there. I don't quite know what this piece is. It looks like some type of piping or, um, a valve of some type. I'm not sure what it is, but it does look exposed. Just want to make you aware of that. But other than that, it looked really clean underneath this um, sequence. Let's talk just briefly about four season capabilities in comparison with the Travato. So the freshwater tank on the sequence like the Travato is internal. That means it's also going to be heated using the coach Heating the gray water tank is external, but it has a heat pad on it, standard, whereas on the Travato it's optional. Same with the black water tank. Neither one have heated dump station like the Bolt has. Interior water lines, yes, routed on the inside for both of these. Uh, insulation, I didn't get anything back when I talked to Thor about the insulation um, or windows. There are no dual pane windows. On the sequence, uh, it is optional on the Travato, but look at that, your heating source is a massive 16 gallon. That was that huge propane tank that we saw underneath the coach compared to the Travato 6. That means that, you know, because your propane is gonna be used for heating the coach as well as your water heater, and that like almost three times larger propane tank means you're gonna be able to stay out in cold and inclement weather much longer in the sequence without needing to fill up your liquid propane. Okay, let's step inside here. It looks, look at this, it looks almost exactly the same as the Travato starting in the back. You've got your three piece wet bath, then there are your set of twin beds, uh, their midsection, and then your galley just forward of that. You do have the, uh, behind your seat there, you do have the kitchen galley counter, but the seat was pushed all the way back. Uh, so it wasn't like the galley counter was blocking the seat from moving back. The inside of the cab, um, other than the Pioneer system that you see here is fairly standard, standard for the ProMaster. And the ProMaster is great to be in. It's easy to drive in. You sit up really high. You've got kind of panoramic windows all around you. Let's just really quickly talk about the safety features. 
Uh, and again, just as a reminder, comparing it against the Transit and the Sprinter, the Promaster is the least expensive of all the chassis here in North America. And so it doesn't have a lot other than your standard airbags and your crosswind assist and your stabilization and, and things like that. It doesn't have a lot of extra safety features. You just need to pay more money and step up either to the Transit or to the Sprinter to get those. Now, uh, the two cab seats do swing around the, the uh, driver's cab seat doesn't swing all the way around because of the kitchen galley. You can pull out that kitchen kind of flimsy kitchen counter cutting board slash extension there and maybe kind of use that as a workstation. I don't know. I, I It's exactly the same as on the Travato and I dinged it on the Travato so I'm going to have to also ding it here. However, I do like this computer workstation on the passenger side. There's a set of AC outlets down below as well as USB ports. I just like the look of it. I like the way you can fold that table away uh, and put it back and it looks, you know, it's, it's Corian, just like the kitchen counter. It just has a little bit more refined look to it. Now, speaking of Corian and kitchen, let's take a look at the galley. Exactly the same layout as the Travato. You've got your microwave, which is convection, and your compressor refrigerator down below, taking up a huge amount of storage space. A nice, okay size kitchen counter. You do have that little bit of a counter extension that can pull out. You do have that pop-up AC outlet and USB uh, port there to the rear right, which I like because you can get it out of the way when you don't need it, and then you just pop it up when you do need it. Residential style faucet there, and then a couple good sized uh, storage cabinets above. Now let's take a look um, at the storage. Again, because you have your microwave and your refrigerator there, there's just not a lot of storage down below, but they do give you a couple drawers there below the convection microwave. And then in addition, they have these two pullout drawers underneath the step up, as integrated into the step up into the cab. And I thought that was just very clever. For one of them, they put in a dog feeding dish. I know for some of you, it won't matter. You can pull that insert out and just use it as a regular storage bin. But for those of us who have pets, it's nice having a dedicated spot for a water dish and a feeding bowl. And then up above, you can see we have a little more cabinet space above. Now you can see here these uh, drawers and the cabinets are not positive locking. Let's take a look at the refrigerator. The refrigerator also has the exact same refrigerator as we saw on the Bolt. And I don't kind of like that flimsy locking mechanism and the flimsy uh, plastic catch for keeping the refrigerator shut. That's a 3.2 cubic foot compressor refrigerator, by the way. But then again, we're not in a $150,000 coach, are we? So it's a little more digestible here. And speaking of the compressor refrigerator, which will draw down uh, your batteries. Let's take a look at this coach's electrical system and compare it to the Travato. So they both have almost the exact same standard AGM lead acid batteries, two group 31 batteries. It's about 200 amp hours. Keep in mind, lead acid batteries are not like lithium. So you take that and half it in terms of usable capacity. So it's about 100 amp hours of usable capacity. That's a little bit low. I wish they'd increase that a little bit more, but there is apparently, according to Thor, going to be announced here shortly, uh, a lithium upgrade up to uh, 11,000 watt hours, which will put it at exactly the same as the National Park Edition of the Travato, which has the up 30% more uh, watt hours on the National Park Edition to 11,000 watt hours as well. So that's not currently available at the time of this review, which is early September 2019, but apparently it's coming and that will be exciting for us to learn a little bit more about it. Um, the inverter on both these coaches is 1,000 watts, a little bit low. That just means that if you're running your microwave, some other things may not work uh, as well. It'd be better if it had 2,000 watts. Look at that though, a 2.8 kilowatt gas generator, just like the Travato standard. I've been in much more expensive coaches than this that did not come with a gas generator standard and also, 190 watts standard of solar. Again, I have been in much more expensive coaches than this where the solar is optional. You can see the Travato bests it a little bit more by about 40 watts with 230 watts of standard solar. 
Okay, before we step into the lounge, I just want to also point out, since we're talking about electrical systems, is the sequence has multiplex wiring, which the Travato doesn't have, and it also comes with a color touchscreen panel that you can see here, which allows you to monitor all your various systems, like your battery levels and your climate control and your tank levels and things like that. And all of these same features are also available via an app, and that's a selling point that the sequence has over the Travato, because the Travato at, at least as of the date of this review, does not offer that. I also like the fact that they have hardwired down below light controls and awning controls, and that just means that you have direct access to those. You don't have to go hunting for those on the interface, on the touchscreen interface above. All right, let's head back inside uh, the lounge slash bedroom. And just like the Travato, you have a set of twin benches here. But in addition, you can set up, uh, just like the Travato, a set of twin tables as well. I really wish the Bolt had that. The Bolt, as we know from last week's review, doesn't have a really good table set up in the back. But here you can see that at least the sequence has thought about that and allowed you to have two tables set up in the back here. Now again, the seats, I don't show it, but the seats are about the same height as on the Bolt and they're not the uh, most comfortable to sit on because they're made for sleeping and they sit up a little high and so your feet are going to dangle. Although I do like the fact, as you can see here, that the cushions are much deeper here than compared to, let's say, the bolt. And so you sit a little bit more forward. So your feet will maybe have a tent, might be able to touch the ground. As well, it comes with that fancy cup holder thing that you can sit, stick between the cushions. I like having cup holders. I've been in coaches that don't have them and it's just a drag when you don't have them and finding a place to, to put your drinks. One thing that I want to point out to you about this coach is we talked about on the outside that the it has very automotive, sleek looking glass windows and it does. But if you notice again in this coach, none of the windows in the back in the lounge here open. Now, I couldn't tell, I would have to use one of these uh, long term to tell, but I couldn't tell. It would seem to me that especially for the bedroom, I, I've been in coaches where um, ventilation is required in warmer weather. You don't want to run the air conditioner, but you want to have the windows open, get some of the cool air in at night while you're trying to sleep. And so it's a little bit concerning for me that at least in the rear section here, there are no windows to open. now. Unlike the National Traveler that I reviewed a few weeks ago, there are opening windows in this coach and they're in the front on each side of the coach, driver side, passenger side, but it's in the galley. So it does provide for cross ventilation in the galley, which is great. And then you do have that rooftop vent in the galley and you also have a vent in the bathroom. Maybe if you have those on and you have the vents, the side windows open in the galley, it might be enough for circulation there in the galley. I'm not convinced that it's enough for ventilation in the bedroom. But again, I'd have to try it out and see. Speaking of bedrooms, let's go ahead and take a look at how these benches look and feel. So you can see here, these benches also, just like the Travato, they have the ability to prop yourself up. They also use the Froley sleep system. And the bed that I'm on here along the passenger side is the longer of the two beds. They both are 30 inches wide, which is a nice width, but this is 80 inches long. So a taller person is going to fit more comfortably on the passenger side. Here on the driver's side, the bed width is the same, 30 inches, but the length is 74 inches. And again, they both use the Froley sleep system and they both have the ability to lay flat or to prop up your back for reading or watching TV. Now here you can see, I'm just going to lift up here so you can see there's the Froley sleep system there, the Froley springs, and you can see the slat system there for the headrests. There is a better look at the Froley system and the slats. And here you can see what it looks like when you can, the mechanism for propping up the bed. And now let's take a look at what you just, to set up one large bed, you just lower the headrest down. And then there are these four metal bars aluminum bars that you just pull across here and that provides support for your two tabletops that you then lay in and then you fill in with your cushions and once you do that then you get a large 54 by 76 inch bed okay let's step back into this rear bathroom now this is a three-piece wet bath three-piece meaning you do have a sink and a toilet 
and a shower, but wet bath means they all kind of share the same area. This is the exact same layout as on the Travado, same dimensions. You do have that flip down sink there over the toilet, flip it back up to get out of the way. And it's a good sized bathroom. I like the fact that there is a large square area for you to stand and move around in. And then across the way, across the toilet is a large storage hanging wardrobe cabinet as well as more drawers for storage. I also like the accordion doors in the sequence. I think they look nicer and I think they'll probably have a less tendency to rattle when you're driving down the road. Here you can see we are on the inside. You have a dedicated rooftop ventilation above and plenty of room to move around. This gives you some idea of the headroom height here and also shoulder room. It's a, uh, for a class B van, I can't, I couldn't really complain. Now, the one thing that was missing here, you'll see, I'm going to turn around here to the side so you can see just good maneuverability. But one thing's missing. If you notice on the rear doors, Oh, that's the Thule magnetic. You pull that off the rear door and you can use that. You attach it and then the, 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 the ladder will hang off that. There are screens that are missing from the rear doors and I didn't see them uh, as an option either. The Travado has uh, screens on the rear door. Here you can see me seated, seated on the toilet and pretty good, you know, it's pretty good headroom, nothing really behind my head. Shoulder room's okay. Let's take a look at the tank sizes. Freshwater tank, again, nearly identical across the board. 26 gallons freshwater, 13 gallons gray, 13 gallons black, a little small on the black side, but exactly the same as on the Travado, but the liquid propane, massive 16 gallons compared to the Travado 6. Also, both systems have a black tank flush system. So what are one of these brand new sequences going to set you back? Well, as you could see from the big green pricing on the front of the sequence, it's priced very aggressively at $79,000 here in September 2019. The MSRP was around 90,000, but 79,000. Um, it does come, which is a great price, by the way, uh, considering what you're getting. It does come with a one year warranty. I wish that it had a longer warranty. But again, we're not talking about a $150,000 coach here. It has a very nice roadside assistance program, five years or 60,000 miles, two three point seat belts, and it sleeps too. So what are the things that I like about the sequence? Well, I really like the price. I mean, you can see dealer pricing here ranging around, you know, $80,000. That's what they're advertising. You probably negotiate it down to the mid, you know, 70s or low 70s. That's not bad for a coach like this that gives you a lot of standard features. I mean, just take a look. These are some of the standard features here that it comes with. But um, I really like the fact that it comes with a standard Thule. I love the Thule uh, rack system for the roof, the ladder, the bike rack, all standard. But let's just take a look at some of these standard features. Roof rack, standard ladder, bike rack, tank warmer, side screen door, touch screen, multiplex wiring system, Weingard Connect 4G system, all standard on the sequence. Again, you can see it here compared with Travato. The Travato has a couple things like a rear screen door and dual paid windows. Uh, which are not available on the sequence, but really I cannot complain with the amount of standard features you get on the sequence, including the generator and the 200, 190 watts of solar. Now, what are some of the things I don't like about the sequence? Well, there aren't many. I They've really done a good job of pricing and balancing out and giving you a lot for your money value-wise on the sequence. Now, the one thing I will say is I'm not too keen on the one year warranty. Yes, I wish they would give you uh, even a two year warranty would be appreciated. And secondly, I'm not keen on the fact that there's no opening windows in the back lounge. Again, I haven't tried it for sure, but my gut tells me that it needs opening windows back in the lounge. And again, I could be mistaken. Um, I didn't see any way to uh, open these small little square windows in the back uh, of the sequence, but I just think without proper ventilation back there at night in warmer weather, it's going to get a little warm and uncomfortable for you. But other than that, 
I really like the sequence. I think it's going to give the Travato a run for its money. And it's always good to see more competition in the Class B segment. Okay, that wraps up today's video review. I hope you found it a little bit helpful. And I thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.